I bet you you didn't know that many years ago I wrote this book called A Summer in Brooklyn, A Summer in Paris. <laughs> and this was before my my trip, my final trip to Paris. When I, I don't want to say final because who knows if it's the final, but um, I, I had made a few trips to Paris before I actually moved to Paris uh, on a semi- permanent basis, if you will, in quotes. And um, I had, uh, um, I had uh, always, you know, had a love-hate relationship with Paris. I mean, it just was always, you know, love-hate. It's, it's always love-hate. Now it's more love-love. <laughs> you know, because there, there are difficulties and there are challenges and there are frustrations. I mean, it's not heaven, you know, but I, I mean, I, I love it. Obviously, it's, it's been in my blood and my grandmother was French, you know, from Guadeloupe. So I'm a little bit French, if you will. And uh, so it's in my blood, but it's always been like love, hate. <laughs> now it's love, love, love with a little bit of hate okay that said um i wrote many many years ago this book called a summer in brooklyn a summer in paris i haven't made a dime on it i don't even know i had my own little um publishing company called the waterfall press in brooklyn and i published it myself and um i don't even know um whether I, i've never made a dime on the on the book I don't think it's on Amazon. I don't know who has it. I think I originally uploaded it to Lulu, lulu.com. I don't know that that's still even um, in operation. And this photo is mine. Um, it is the rectory at um, on Midar Street in Brooklyn Heights, where my dad was the organist of the church there. And I was once the receptionist <laughs> for Monsignor Fonaro, who's now deceased. And um, and so this this is the little walkway that I think Monsignor Fonaro was the one who had this installed um, back in the day when I was still there. So this is my book, A Summer in Brooklyn, A Summer in Paris. And so I've always been in love, like I said, with Paris. And um, but, you know, it's very important, I think, to um, appreciate where you are, wherever that is. I mean, Paris is wonderful, but so is Brooklyn. And I think that's the point I was making in this book. Um, you know, I love Brooklyn. I love Paris. I love America. I love France. I just love every. I mean, look, I even love Russia. I went to um, St. Petersburg and I was shocked at how beautiful St. Petersburg is. I just think that... If only humanity could just oh, learn to appreciate the good and, and, and really focus on the good and focus on improving each other and ourselves and, and stop with all the craziness and the fighting and the this and that. But anyway, um, so I don't know that this book is available, but it was a comparison of the two cities and really trying to, you know, you know play up Brooklyn a little bit because, I mean, I don't want people to think, oh, you know, I've forgotten where I, where I come from or something like that because, you know, oh, Paris, Paris, Paris. Yes, I love Paris, okay? But I also love Brooklyn and I love, I just love, just, I just love, I love, 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 okay? Now, that said, I'm completely naked. Why? Because the apartment is in Bedlam, because, <laughs> like literally naked. Um, the apartment is in Bedlam because don't ask, just don't ask. It's better never to ask Marion what is going on because she's always up to something. You know what I'm saying? And so I was doing something in the apartment. It got a little overheated and whatever. I just got an email from my friend, Julie, which was very interesting. She was talking about bed bugs in Paris. Like apparently the American media is really playing up this story about how there are all these bed bugs in Paris and, you know, they're sort of talking about 
next year for the for the olympics what's going to happen because when people come to paris there are all these bed bugs it's an emergency and the government has been you know weighing its options to sort of get rid of all these bed bugs now i don't personally have any bed bugs if i do i've never seen them and i've never had any experiences with bed bugs i mean i i don't know i don't see them i was on the bus yesterday i didn't see them there either I don't know what everybody's talking about, but it doesn't mean the fact that I don't know means that there isn't a problem because I'm usually the last to know these things anyway. Uh, but I do think to some extent there's some hyperbole there. Some maybe, I don't know, there could be some sort of media um, hysteria because it's going to be the Olympics next year in Paris. So I mean, let's just tell everybody there are all these bed bugs so that people get freaked out and they don't go. Because in my everyday life, I don't encounter bed bugs, right? I don't stay in hotels, obviously. Um, and I think maybe some hotels have, have some problems with that because, you know, you have people coming from all over the world with suitcases who knows what's in the suitcase I mean I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know if, if there is a problem I'm sure that I, you know eventually something will happen and I'll figure it out I don't know but um yeah for me I, I try to focus on you know what I want to see like butterflies <laughs> I'm not interested in bed bugs so I don't go looking for bed bugs I look for butterflies. I look for beautiful little creatures like cats and horses and stuff like that. I don't sort of focus on, on that kind of stuff because then I feel like it manifests. It's like what you focus on manifests, right? So if you want to see bad bugs, um, you will see them, right? And if you want to see butterflies, you see those too. And sort of I'm in the mood for butterflies, right? So I don't this is my painting of Marie Antoinette because I just love her, okay? So everybody leave her the bleep alone, okay? Because I'm going to be her attorney and I'm going to sue everybody who maligns her and says anything negative about her. Leave her alone, okay? So that's it. So, um, so the bed bugs, I don't know anything about it. I don't know. I don't have them yet to my knowledge. Um, I'm showing off all my books. I just love my books. Interiors, California. Oh, <laughs> Camille, that's my book. I want that to be like a movie. Speaking of which, apparently there are all these like bed bugs on the bus. Um, I've never seen even one on any bus I've been on. I don't even actually think I know what they look like, to be honest with you, but I don't see them on the bus. And I don't think anybody is particularly worried about bad bugs on this bus. So I think a lot of it is media, you know, media, what do you call it? The word I'm looking for is they're trying to create news. It's news. It's like pandemonium. Let's just make everybody go into this panic where, you know, because yeah, I think, I'm sure there, there are some people who have bad bugs in Paris just as anywhere else in the world. And maybe enough that it is concerning to the government, but it's not an everyday concern for the average Parisian person. I don't think so, because I haven't seen anything, you know, I mean, I'm on the bus right now. I, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know, you know, so especially in America, I think like the main news organizations like NBC, ABC, all that, they've been doing these stories on all this next year's Olympics and, you know, setting up the Olympics to be the bed bugs Olympics. I mean, just stop already because it's not that bad because, you know, I just, I live here. I have lived here for 12 years going on 13. I've never seen even one. So if it's in the hotels and places like that, then there is a question about how did it even get here in the first place, right? Not that that matters. If it's here, it's here. But don't make it sound like, you know, it's airborne and, you know, you come to Paris and you'll just be bombarded with bed bugs. It's not true. All right, so... Um, Allah, 
I'm on Avenue Mozart. You know what? I, I kind of have a little issue right now that I shouldn't share. It's too much information, honestly. <laughs> but um, I don't know how beautiful is this. Oh my God. I, I just have to take a little bit of a shot because this is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Do you stop to smell the roses yourself? I mean, look. It's so important. Okay, so my stomach is hurting. My stomach is hurting. And I'm saying to myself, Marion, 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 Marion. It's incredibly inconvenient for you to get diarrhea right now. Dakar? <laughs> That's too much information. <laughs> you know, I am going to. Marion. Marion, Marion. Yes, but my stomach is hurting. What do you want me to do? All right, I'm late, but I had to stop for two seconds just to admire these beautiful, beautiful bouquets of flowers. I mean, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Is this nature or they manipulated nature with this one, right? They absolutely must have. Why don't I? I can never get this open. I don't know. And it's always simple, but like, I can never get it open. What's your take? What do you do wrong, man? I don't know. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Um. Whew. Jesus Christ. It's a simple thing. Is it locked? Is it? I think it's locked sometimes. And I think that. Holy. Oh, yeah. oh, this is a bell. Okay. That's the bell. Just ring the bell, Marion. <laughs> this is actually one of the most beautiful little alleyways in Paris. <sighs> I, I just never get tired of it. It's so beautiful. And then it's this way. And then it's that way. It's really, really beautiful. Mais, mais pourquoi ça, ça fonctionne pas? C'est bloqué. Where's my mask? I have my mask. My little, my little student. Bonjour. <laughs> Je ne peux pas ouvrir la porte. Oh, and if I don't have a passage with, with comprehension, do you have a book with uh, in English like a uh, histoire la semaine dernière to Madonna? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a book for read to read, yes. Yeah, to read. I have um, three comic and I have one book that's not a comic. One book that's not a comic, okay, but it's very long. Parce que maman elle veut pour toi. Lair, les articles, les choses comme ça. Remember well enough the day of the whole sale, the terror of it stayed, stayed with me all my life. Okay, stop. What did you What did you understand from this? What did you understand? Um, Somebody acquired my earliest memories. Um, my. my er Dernière memories, ma ma mémoire. Ouais, ma ma première mémoire, my earliest, le plus le le plus uh, tôt peut-être mémoire que j'ai. D'accord. This is very bad French, but that's. I okay. think it's this. Okay, so attends. So okay, so my earliest memories are a confusion of hilly fields and dark, damp stables. What are stables? Une étable. Étable, très bien. And what what are fields? Um, fields are. I don't know. 
the shore. Ah. A water rat. Uh, a rat. Zara. Zara. And somebody called scampered along. Scampered. Scampered, say call. Okay. Scampered along the beams above my head. The beams above my head. So, le ra, il, il courir, il a couru. Um, au-dessus de ma tête. Ouais, au-dessus de ma tête, uh, dans ma chambre, peut-être. Ok? Et, um, mais pourquoi ça, ça change le... Oh, non, attends. Et puis, c'est quoi d'autre? Um, oui. Ma earliest memory, ça va pas jouer. Mets ça à côté, mets ça à côté pour moi. Hein? My, my, uh... All right, so it's going to be ramen. All right, so it's a ramen noodle kind of a night. Yeah, it's a ramen noodle kind of a night. I thought I was done with that from like, <laughs> you know, law school and college, but no.